Hello, hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday, Tuesday tip. We're going live in the Facebook group for the first time. We'll see how this goes. Great to see you. I am currently situated in Princeton, New Jersey, where we unfortunately do not have any snow. It all melted last night. But there were some interesting graphs that came across my news feed last night that got me really thinking of how is it that we actually help our students visualize data? So I'm going to share the one that prompted this tip and this idea first, and then then we'll go back to maybe a little bit of space where we're more typically at. So the New York Times has their data visualization desk was putting out something like this, where it was the likelihood of getting different amounts of snowfall. Now, as you can see, we weren't forecasted to get very much, but you know, I can always hope as a snow loving human. But what I think is really interesting about this way of visualizing it is this is not typically how we have our students think about range or predictions or how things can actually vary, right? We were using models to think about, to make a prediction forward as to how much snow we might make. And rather than some folks use heat maps or error bars or things like that, what they've done, what the data visualization desk did was they created a bar chart, which we know we all love, all of our students use all the time, but then they bend it. Let me see if I can get it close enough. And here, this is the key piece, the percent of likelihood of these different values was what they were showcasing. So super quickly, we can see the distribution of the predictions, the variability in how much snow we might have gotten. Now, turns out we did get less than an inch and then we got freezing rain all night long and now it's turned into real rain. So not super exciting on the snow front, but super exciting to think about, okay, well, if we've got a range, if our students are working with data that is binned, you know, maybe this is a different way than a histogram or a dot plot to have our students look at it. We are looking at the likelihood and the amount of snow that might fall. So we've got a bunch of variables going on there. So that got me thinking, what are other ways that we have our students visualize data and make sense of data? Very typically standard error or error bars of the standard error or of the standard deviation are what come to mind. But that's really tricky and complex to actually make sense of, let alone that all of our graphing programs put together those error bars in some interesting ways, like thank you, the default is one, regardless of what your data values are, often in you know Excel or Google Sheets sometimes. Um, but there's some other options that are put forward in this great book, The Basics of Data Literacy by Michael Bowen and Anthony Bartley. If you don't have a copy, find a copy. It is no longer in print, but there are PDF versions online and um, you can get them, I think, on eBay or other places. I am not paid to sell you this book, but it's a great book. But one of the things that I love that they talk about is, OK, so here are our data. It doesn't matter what the data are, but what typically we do is we've got bars and then we put error bars around them, or we have dots and then we put error bars around them. And what David and Anthony are suggesting that we do is instead plot our raw data. So then we can look and comparing these two bars visually looks really different than comparing these two bars because we are visualizing actively the variability in the raw data values of our data. Wait, one more. Okay, so we can see like, like all of this is getting helping students get a sense of are these bars really different? What if this is what it looked like when you are actually plotting your data? And so, you know, whoa, this jumps out that we've got two modes, our data are bimodal on this category as opposed to this one. And then again, all goes into the are they different? How do we make sense of it? This is why we need variability. It exists in our data sets. But how do we help our students intuitively understand that? So we've got the cool revised histogram from the New York Times about data predictions, even though I didn't get snow. And we've got some great ideas of plotting our raw data from the Basics of Data Literacy book by Michael Bowen and Anthony Bartley. I think I screwed up their names at one point. But those are two easy tips to how to get your students visualizing data more easily and more quickly going forward. I hope those have gone well. Great to see all of you and would love to hear how you're helping your students visualize data. Have a good Tuesday.